Hello and welcome to the first part of the series regarding Fibonacci retracement. We'll go through the basics on this episode. And the big basic is what is it? What is Fibonacci? And well, would it be a noun, a pronoun, an adverb? And yeah, it's a noun, person, place, or thing. Therefore, is it a person or some a thing somebody named and yeah it's a person and if you look at the name of it it sounds very Italian oh that's exactly what this is a gentleman many years ago who was Italian who wanted to calculate the increase of the rabbit uh, population and came across this in itself and that's all I'm going to be talking about within the creation and the origins within it. If you want to know more about that, the information is available with on, within the web. Therefore, what exactly is the Fibonacci retracement? Well, first, we need to know the Fibonacci sequence. The Fibonacci sequence starts off with only two numbers, binary numbers. The first binary number being that of zero, and the second binary number of one. You take the two numbers and you multiply them together. 0 plus 1 would equal 1. And then you continuously take the previous or the last number, which is 1, and you multiply the last one that you just made again, which would be 1. So 1 plus 1 is 2. So you take 1 again and you add 2, and well, that's 3. And then you take 2 and 3 and you add 5. You take 3 and 5 and you add 8 and so on, and so on. And this can be done very easily within a spreadsheet. When you're working within one of these, you put in the number zero, say for example in uh, cell A1, and you put in the number one in cell A2, and then you tell the computer to take this number, and what you wanna do is you wanna add its previous number, which would give you one, and you can copy and paste this uh, on many different, as far as you want to go lower, but what will, this will give you is the retracement, or it's not the retracement, sorry, but the sequence of numbers, and they can go up pretty big. Now what we'll do is take one of these numbers and divide it by its previous, and then we'll copy and paste this all the way higher, and there's the 1.62, which is where the 61.8% really comes from. We'll uh, throw these with many, many different decimals so we can see better what the uh, ratio happens to be. Now, why this ratio works so well within nature, that is still a question within myself, because I don't know. But it does for some whatever strange reason. So there we have it. The Fibonacci, or the golden ratio, is 61.8 zero three three nine eight eight seven four nine nine percent so we take this number we notice one to two that's higher then the next number would be lower which is one five five then it's higher but not as high as this number and then it's lower but not as low as this number and then it goes higher once again not as high as this then lower once again not as low as this that goes on forever. That can never, ever stop until infinity. If we put up a quick little uh, chart for what something like this would look like, let me just change the size of it just so it's a little bit bigger, though it's not going to be much bigger. And here we can see that it goes from this low point to this high, and then it retraces back a 38.2%. Same thing, and it just keeps on doing it forever and ever and ever. We'll uh, say we'll do up to 33 here. We'll do a few more. We'll go from 23 to 33. Again, we can see the same thing from 1.618033985 from the lower point. And then it goes up here. No matter which sections you look at, it's always going to look the same. 
So therefore, that's where the 61.8% levels come from. Now, as far as 38.2%, there are two different ways you can come up with the numbers. To start off, what we'll do is we'll take one of these numbers and we'll subtract it by one just to give it its actual percentage uh, format. It says 62, we'll put in percentage and once again, put a bunch of different decimals, 61.8034. To find the 38.2, like I say, there's two ways. The easiest one is to take one and to subtract this, which would give us 38.2%. Once again, we'll give it a bunch more decimals say six for this one, 38.1966. Another way of doing it is taking this number, the 61.8% and times it and multiplying it by 61.80%. And if we put in six decimals in here, you'll notice we have the exact same number, 0.381966. Three that would be the 38.2%. You'll oftentimes hear people or myself talk about a 23.6% as well as maybe even a 76.4%. Well, if we take this 38.19 and multiply it again by 61.8%, then that's where we will come up with the 23.6% variable. We will take the one and subtract this again and we get 76%. The key numbers will be the 61.8 and the 38.2%, however. Fibonacci retracement is used when you're looking at a stock market and you wanna figure out where a market should be moving up or down towards after you've signified a specific high and low, which for the most part are usually the biggest highs and the biggest lows. Therefore, we take a look at this particular chart, which is a silver chart from this current time frame. And you have this situation where you came up to $49.81, and then you went all the way down towards in here. The significant areas you are looking for were on many occasions, the market seems to find levels of resistance are both the 38 0.2% and the 61.8%. There are two different ways to calculate the Fibonacci retracement, and that would be by taking the highest point and subtracting the lowest point. Get the difference of the two. And then you can multiply this by whatever Fibonacci number that you're looking for. Therefore, 38.2%, maybe 61.8, and then you get the difference of the two numbers and you add it towards the low. This is the linear version within this, not the logarithmic or exponential Fibonacci. For the exponential Fibonacci, what you would do is you would take the highest price again, and this time instead of subtracting the low, you would divide it by the low. And this gives you the difference that it has from top to bottom or how big the move is. If it doubles in price, the answer will be two. This one wasn't quite double, but still a decent size. And you put this to the exponential power of the Fibonacci percentage that you're looking for. Again, it's either 38.2% or 61.8%. And then you get that number, you multiply it by its lowest level, that the market has seen. In this case, the high was $49.81. So we take the $49.81 and we will divide it by the low, which would be $32.32. That gives us a difference of 1.54. We can put this to the exponential power of the first one that we need, which is 38.2%, and then multiply it again by the low, which gives us a mark of roughly at around $38.13. Now, if you're off by a few pennies, that usually means nothing at all, because a lot of times when these levels come to the area, 
they generally go very close towards that mark. Now, if we take the same variable and look at it in the first example that I used by taking the high and subtracting it rather than dividing it, you take 4981 and you subtract 3232. That gives you a difference of 1749. We'll multiply 38.2% of it and add it again from the low, which gives us a number much different at $39. The more difference it is from top to bottom, the bigger the differences of these are going to be. If you look at this on an entry level, trying to calculate this low to this high, then they're going to work out very much the same. Therefore, when you have major markets where you're going from, say, 60 to 400 back to 130, it's highly uh, recommended on my view to use exponential Fibonacci. When you're using shorter term time frames, it really doesn't make a difference whatsoever. Later on, we're going to talk more about this. Uh, we'll talk about finding confirmation, finding entry points, exit points, as well as so many different other things and any questions that you may have along the way as well. One person mentioned, well, how do you know what the tops and bottoms happen to be? When you look at the tops and bottoms, it's very easy to find where the big highs and big lows happen to be. That part is very easy. And if you're looking from a point A to point B, sort of like with an Elliott wave, then that can work out very well. For example, you come down to this level and then you're rallying. So if you're selling off and you're right here, well, where is the 38.2 and where is the 61.8? Because you know this is a high and this is a low and they're there's so many different time frames that many charts can have that it's a never-ending situation. So thank you for watching part one, and I look forward to putting out part two in the next few days. Take care.